Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahshah, Bashim Rakai Kodash, Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there, Shalom to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video, The First Was Like a Lion and Had Eagle's Wings. This is, uh, I'm going to go into Daniel chapter 7. Uh, this is an ongoing uh, series. Let's see where the Spirit takes me. Um called Back to the Basics. I did the first video of this particular series yesterday and a couple of uh, you know individuals uh, such as Apostle Gabar did a sort of a counter response to it and Apostle Rhyme Lob did a response to it. I was li listened to some of it this morning and maybe some others did it as well and they added they built upon it um, I was dealing with uh, Romans chapter 9, and I focus on, it was, the f I believe it was the fourth verse. I didn't go through the whole chapter, but they, they went a little deep, they went a little deep into it. They went beyond uh, the fourth verse, the ninth chapter and the fourth verse. I don't know if I said fourth chapter and the ninth verse. So anyway, I said, uh, and I was just watching uh, some of a uh, video that uh, the elder head of uh, Dallas, GMS Dallas, he did a video on uh, Romans chapter 11. He was covering this guy that never really came into the truth. He used to have a YouTube page, and I guess he watched our videos and other Israelite, former one West uh, Israelite groups and kind of did his own thing and he did a video maybe a year ago where he said he don't deal with this no more so he never even came in the right way so the video that uh, the elder Yashawamba did he was focusing on that individual and um, anyway I'm going to see where the spirit is going to take me on this now, I open it up with this, the fourth verse, because the first three verses, pretty much self-explanatory, speaks about uh, the king of Babylon and the vision. Uh, Daniel had the vision. Daniel had visions and so did the king of Babylon have visions. Matter of fact, I'll read it. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a, had a dream and visions of his bed upon his, uh, of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told us some of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my night, my vision, by night and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart or mind was given to it. So what I did was I went to the uh, commentary and I read the first the first three verses but I went into the uh, I'm going to focus on the fourth verse. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you have people that are uh, say that the former one westers the black hebrew israelites they're just making it up the most is really not dealing with them they should be christians and so forth well first of all we all came out of the Christi christianity church and all these men that came out of christianity saw a deeper understanding of the scriptures because you know to be honest you christians you don't you don't understand the scriptures 
You don't understand the prophecies. You just don't understand. But now the uh, the scholars among the uh, Christian community, they have an understanding. So like I said, they'll say, oh, the Hebrews are like just making it up. They don't really know prophecy. Well, anyway, I'm going to actually go to the commentary. This is came a Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges. And now uh, let me see. Okay, it says the eagle, uh, griffin, vulture, a great vulture, mis a maj majestic bird, pl plucked, o uh, plucked off the wings on which, as an animal, it, it had been lying upon two feet. A man's intelligence was given to it. Daniel 4, verse 16. The, bird, the first beast was like a lion, eagle, griffin, go, uh, griffin vulture. It corresponds to the head of gold in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. This is in Daniel 2, 38, 32, 32. And 38, verse 38, and it notes an analogously or the same as to that the Babylonian Empire. So we teach that that first uh, beast that stood upon its feet, the feet, the eagle's wings was plucked and it stood up upon its feet, represents that the Neo Babylonian Empire. The, the, the smile of the lion. Appear, applied to the Nebu, to Nebuchadnezzar in Genesis 49.19 and that the griffin vulture to either Nebuchadnezzar or his armies so we really don't have to read anymore Because they're telling you that this first image, the first part of this dream, is talking about the uh, Babylonian Empire, which the king of Babylon, the rulers of Babylon were Assyrian. Back at one west, they said they were a Cushite. They were not Cushite, they were Assyrian. They were related to the Assyrians. So in the fifth verse, And I may break this up. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said unto, thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Bear me for a minute. Okay, here we go. The kingdom denoted by by it corresponds to the silver kingdom of Daniel 2 verse 32, which was inferior, Daniel 2 verse 39, to that of Nebuchadnezzar, which was the head of gold in Daniel 2 i.e. the empire of the Medes as was pointed out on Daniel 2.39 the book of Daniel represents the Chaldean Empire as su succeeded not Im immediately by Cyrus but by a Mede, a Median ruler Darius and Cyrus was a Persian It raised upon 
it 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 had rays up on one side. This is the Masoretic reading. Was raised upon one side. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, let me come down here. And it had three ribs. It raised upon its um, one side represents the the Medes came into power first, then the Persians were more powerful than the Medes. As a matter of fact, it was a Mede that put out the order to have uh, the king of Babylon, you know, executed, and that that was uh, Darius. And then Cyrus came came in after you can go into all that history as the prey which is it it had seized those who regard the bear as symbolizing the medio persian empire generally suppose the three ribs uh to to note libya libya babylon babylon and egypt Yeah, those were the three, so they they're correct. The three ribs and and um, and the bear's mouth was Libya, Babylon, and Egypt. The way they're breaking it down is the same way we break it down. So we're not making it up. Sixth verse. After this I beheld and lo another like a leopard which which uh, had which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl the beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it Let me see this let me do this here Let me put in the word. This is from the Benson, Benson commentary. It says, this third kingdom is that of the Macedonians or Grecians. So that's all we need. Let me do this. Matthew Pohl, Pohl's commentary, Leopard was the Grecian monarch. A leopard is less than a lion, so was the monarchy at the first, but yet durst fight with a lion. So did Alexander encounter Darius. Now this was a different Darius. With a force very small to the other because it was considered you it was lunacy to go up against the uh this empire let me look at this the beasts also have four heads now look at that Ptolemy Seleucus it mentions others Antigonus But the main four was Ptolemy, Seleucus, 
Cassandra and Lassamakis, which they don't tell you right here. But you had Antigonus was among them. Philip, Philippus was another. Which they should have told you that the two they should have mentioned uh Cassandra and Lassimas Lacamasis or Lassimasis, however you want to want to uh say it. So there you there, there you go. So we ain't making this up. The Israelites are not making this up. After this on the night vision, behold a fourth beast. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. When Daniel saw this, he said this this was a fierce beast. Even fiercer than the three before it. And it had great iron teeth and devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue. Uh, they set up uh, empire and they set up provinces. Your Palestine was one of the provinces. Uh, the residue with the feet of it and it ha and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay, let me do this. And I did this breakdown before some some years ago. But like I said, we have this series called uh, "Back to the Basics." For you newer brothers that that come come in, put in Rome. Benson commentary. The fourth, the fourth kingdom can be no other than the Roman Empire. We don't got to read no more. We don't got to read no more. It reduced Macedon into a Roman province. Josephus and the author of the Apocalypse of uh, Baruch being among the number maintained the Roman Empire to be meant. Now if you notice, the Cambridge doesn't mention anything about a Roman Empire. They mentioned in Alexander the Greek, the empire meant, which they don't understand. But the Benson, they're correct. The Pope commentary, they're correct. The Jamison. A uh, four set brown Bible commentary, they're correct. For Rome is so terrible as to be not describable by anyone, but combines in itself all that we can imagine inexpressibly fierce in all beasts. Daniel 7 and 7. This is why I go to the Bible Hub because they give you, they give you what a good eight to ten different commentators. Now 
They're going to definitely go off on this one. The little horn. They're going to say that it's uh, Antiochus. Let's see if I'm correct. Oh, I'm not correct. Wait a minute. Yeah, they do mention Antiochus. The they say the little one is Antiochus Epiphanes, which is not is not uh, not correct because the Greeks were already passed. Seven verse talks about the Romans. Why is the eight verse going to go back to the Greek Empire? Matter of fact, let me do this. Okay, six times. They keep saying Antiochus, and they say, oh, they say it's the Antichrist. So among these five, six, seven commentators, only one of them pretty much mentions Antiochus, but they're wrong. Because that little horn represents America. Now watch how they beat this up. Then I'm going to close and I'll come back. I beheld till the thrones of the ancient days did sit. We know that that's the father whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his, of his head like the pure wool. The throne was like the fiery flame and his wills as burning fire. This is getting ready to happen. Let me pull out some. The Ancient of Days. Ancient of Days. Okay. Daniel sees is Daniel sees is not the eternal God himself, but an age. <laughs> oh my goodness. For an old man. Sarek 25 and 4. Oh how calmly a thing is judgment for gray hairs. Oh they don't, they don't know. They don't know. And he put in the word God and word fine. Okay, it's up there 61 times. Well, Ellicott, I think they got it right. They said, uh, a symbol casting of punitive righteousness of God devours the enemies of God the figure of speech is here used in each of these sense, uh, sense, senses the will represent the omnipresence of almighty God okay so they said it was God they ain't gonna go into the, the woolly hair part See, it says, it says, <laughs> white as snow, man, the woolly hair. It says, indicating, like the pure wool, the purity and justice 
of the judge. Not not a black man. No, no, he can't be a black man. We know the angels and the most high the Lord are all white men. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say on this one. Um most high willing. Yahweh Shimia I would like to go come back and maybe start at ten. Let me do this. Okay, we got 28 verses, so so really from this point, the 9th verse on, that's when the fun begins. This is talk, talking about the utter destruction of the 4th uh, beast, and the 4th beast had two reigns. It, it, it died and came back. Let me do something here. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, even forever and ever. The fourth kingdom, the, the fourth kingdom of the Gentiles will pass away and succeed by the kingdom of the saints of the Most High. Who are the saints of the Most High, which will endure forever? The saints of the Most High seem here. As also in Daniel seven twenty two, which are the angels, saints are also angels to take place uh, of the one like unto a man unto a son of man. They're not going to say the Israelites. They're not going to say the saints are the Israelites. Israel. Okay, Jameson, Forsyth Brown, Bible Commentary, 18 verse of Most High, the em emphatic title of God. In this prophecy, who delegates his power first to Israel, then to the Gentiles. Then to the Gentiles. When Israel fails to real shows you that these people don't know what they're talking about. So the saints of the Most High are ultimately Gentiles. the true members of the covenant nation, the New Testament Israel of God, meaning the Gentiles are going to become the new Israelites, the spiritual Israelites. And these kingdoms shall receive the kingdom of Israel, who are the saints of the Most High, until the world to come, until the Messiah reigns. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Most High Willing. I'll come back and I'll start at the 10th verse. Shalom.